And in the dream, I knew that he was going on ahead. And he's fixing to make a fire somewhere out there and all that dark and all that cold. And I knew that whenever I got there, he'd be there. And I woke up. In this video, I am going to take a closer look at the character Ed Tom Bell from the film No Country for Old Men and the ways that he seems to be struggling within the psychological developmental stage of ego integrity versus despair. The Nine Stages of Psychosocial Development is a framework created by the psychologist Eric Erickson. Each stage comprises a particular age range in life in which an individual is meant to accomplish certain tasks successfully so that they can move to the next stage and continue with healthy development. Many people tend to focus on the early stages of development in this model, which are associated with childhood development, but it can be argued that success in the later stages is just as important to well-being and health. The stage of ego integrity versus despair begins to take place around the age of 65 or when someone is ready to retire from their job or career. By a closer analysis of the character in the film, I hope to show the ways that Ed's behaviors and conversations seem to reflect the ways that he has been unable to develop ego integrity and is instead headed towards despair in old age. With this information in mind, Let's get into the analysis. In the opening scene of the film, we hear Ed in a monologue as a way to introduce the themes of the movie. Much of his words are focusing on how things used to be in the area he lives in, while also paying importance to the ways that things have changed. He talks about how a long line of descendants in his family have been sheriff in that area, a sign of how things have not changed much, while also talking about how the sheriff never used to need to carry a gun a sign of things that have changed drastically. It seems like there never used to be violence in that area, or at least it was not noticed very much, and that now people in the area have begun committing crimes for no particular reason. Ed is having a hard time wrapping his head around all these changes. He's unsure why or what has caused it all. He says, It's not that I'm afraid of it. I always knew you had to be willing to die to even do this job. But I don't want to push my chips forward and go out and meet something I don't understand. Ed feels like he's missing something, and maybe that's the key to his problem. Perhaps he's missed some parts of his life that could have helped him make sense of all these changes. As he and his family have been stuck in that area for such a long time, it's possible that his worldview does not encompass a larger part of the whole. His seclusion from what else is out there makes all these changes seem so novel and strange. Instead of having a clearer view of things, everything seems to be blurry and out of focus at this time of his life. Erickson described ego integrity as the acceptance of one's one and only life cycle as something that had to be and later as a sense of coherence and wholeness. Individuals who reflect on their life and regret not achieving their goals will experience feelings of bitterness and despair. At the one hour, 18 minute mark of the film, Ed is in a diner speaking to Carla Jean about her husband's whereabouts. Carla Jean seems certain that Llewellyn will be fine and then Ed starts talking in an allegorical way about how it's always possible that life can turn on you and put you in an unexpected spot. The story he utilizes is about cows being put down, which causes him to speak about the tool they use to kill cows, the same weapon being used by Anton, and how the cows are often killed before they even know what's going on. Although the content of Ed's conversation is about Llewellyn, and the case he is investigating, the meaning of his speech is centered on themes of death and uncertainty. It's focused on the ways that a life can come to an end at any time and how you can never really prepare for it. As Tom is on the brink of retirement, a major life change, he seems completely unsure about his future and what awaits him. He seems hesitant to enter this next stage of his life, not only due to the unknowns, but also because his life doesn't seem to have given him the confidence to move forward with ease. Not only is death looming for Ed, 
but the existential dread that comes along with old age is at his doorstep as well. It's all staring him in the face, and he is feeling unsure and uncertain about his future prospects. The integrity versus despair stage begins as the aging adult begins to tackle the problem of his or her mortality. The onset of this stage is often triggered by life events such as retirement, the loss of a spouse, the loss of friends and acquaintances, facing a terminal illness, and other changes to major roles in life. Successfully resolving the crisis at this stage leads to the development of what Erickson referred to as ego integrity. People are able to look back at their life with a sense of contentment and face the end of life with a sense of wisdom and no regrets. Erickson defined this wisdom as an informed and detached concern with life itself, even in the face of death itself. At the one hour, 27 minute mark of the film, Tom is at a diner with his deputy Wendell, and he is reading through the newspaper about different horrific events. He says, It's just all out war. I can't think of any other word for it. Who are these people? He seems to be further contemplating why people make the choices that they do. It all seems so foreign to him. He is completely bewildered by the news. At one point, Ed makes a dark joke, and the deputy laughs. Tom replies by saying, Oh, that's all right. I laugh myself sometimes. You know, a whole lot else you can do. It seems Tom can't help but laugh, primarily due to the absurdity of it all. And maybe it's all the more absurd because he hasn't been able to do anything to stop what's occurring. As he's seen his time as a sheriff come to a close, Tom may be wondering if he could have done more, if there was something he could have done differently in life to help with these current situations. Even in this conversation with Wendell, we see an example of how Tom should be using his wisdom and guidance to help his deputy work through these issues. He should be able to assure and calm the deputy who is much younger and less experienced. But instead, Tom is just as lost and anxious as Wendell, proving his inherent lack of wisdom. Everything is getting worse around Tom, and maybe that's partly his fault. It seems for many years he thought he had a tight grasp on the reality of the situation and how things were supposed to be, but now it seems that has all faded into the background. As we grow older, 65 years and more, and become senior citizens, we tend to slow down our productivity and explore life as a retired person. Eric Erickson believed if we see our lives as unproductive, feel guilt about our past, or feel that we did not accomplish our life goals, we become dissatisfied with life and develop despair, often leading to depression and hopelessness. At the one hour, 37 minute mark of the film, Tom is seen having coffee at a diner again, this time with another local sheriff. As they talk together, we realize that they hold many of the same views on the world. They hold the same sentiments about the changing world and where things might be headed. They both seem unsure and overwhelmed. They are both uneasy about the landscape of things. We can see that instead of trying to meet with people who may look at the situation differently, perhaps in a more objective or optimistic way, Tom is gravitating towards others who will reinforce his ideas. He's often surrounded by people who think the same as him, people who hold the same worldview. In other scenes of the movie involving Anton, we are exposed to several local people who seem to have made little of their lives who have failed to leave the place they grew up within, and are primarily at the feet of fate. Many of the people Anton encounters seem ignorant of the world around them. Even Llewellyn is someone who has made little of his life, someone who has never grown or progressed, and would likely be categorized in the stagnation stage of psychosocial development. All these characters are the types of people who Tom has been surrounded with for much of his life, and so, they are also reflections of who Tom may be himself. They are similar in that they have all failed to remove themselves from the small bubble that they consider the world. Being unwilling or unable to expose themselves to all of life's possibilities and mysteries, they have all gravitated towards choices that tend to lead to despair in later parts of life.
At each stage of psychosocial development, people are faced with a crisis that acts as a turning point in development. Successfully resolving the crisis leads to a developing a psychological virtue that contributes to overall psychological well-being. At the integrity versus despair stage, the key conflict centers on questioning whether or not the individual has led a meaningful, satisfying life. At the 1 hour 42 minute mark of the film, Tom heads over to the house of his old friend Ellis. We come to see the type of deep despair that Ellis already resides within. He has nobody in his life, nothing to engage in, his house is in complete disarray. He has numerous cats living there, unsure of how many he has or which are which. At one point, he says that he makes one pot of coffee per week, even if he has some left over. We are being shown a man whose life is in shambles, and despite this fact, Tom is still going to him in further search of some type of wisdom of advice, displaying how desperate he is to find answers or certainty. Ellis questions why Tom is quitting his job, and Tom responds, I feel overmatched. I always figured when I got older, God would sort of come into my life somehow. And he didn't. Tom has some notion in his head that God doesn't think very highly of him. Another indicator of Tom's lack of confidence and esteem, of his lack of integrity regarding his life choices. Ellis proceeds to talk about a friend who died, and all Tom wants to know about is whether the process was slow or fast. He's trying to find answers to his questions. He wants to regain the clarity that has vanished from his life. Ellis responds to him, You can't stop what's coming. It ain't all waiting on you. That's vanity. Meaning, if you haven't done anything with your life at that point, there is not much you can do now. If you haven't created meaning and coherence, then you might be facing an impossible task. Not only can you not hold off death and dying, you also can't go back in time and make use of your life in a more meaningful and valuable way. Success in this stage will lead to the virtue of wisdom. Wisdom enables a person to look back on their life with a sense of closure and completedness and also accept death without fear. Wise people are not characterized by a continuous state of ego integrity, but they experience both ego integrity and despair. Thus, late life is characterized by both integrity and despair as alternating states that need to be balanced. At the one hour, 53 minute mark of the film, Tom is eating breakfast at the table with his wife following his retirement. He's deep into despair at this point as he tries to figure out how his day will go. He wonders about going horseback riding with his wife, and she says she can't go with him. He then mentions maybe cleaning the house, and she says she can't plan his day for him. The existential crisis is all too real for Tom at this point, as he is realizing that he is effectively on his own now, that there is nothing left for him but himself and his thoughts. There is no one that can save him from himself. And because he has not lived a life that was satisfying, because he has failed to create meaning, he is completely lost and hesitant to start this long process. He then tells his wife about the dreams he had the previous night, and how one of them is about his father riding ahead of him, hunched over on a horse. He mentions how his father would be waiting for him when he got to the end, and we realize how ideas of death and extinction are now creeping into Tom's subconscious through his dreams. Even in sleep, he can't escape the idea that he could have done more in his life, that he could have changed things for himself and maybe the world around him. As he finishes explaining his dreams, we hear the clock ticking in the background, signifying the seconds ticking down in his life. We hear the time that Tom will be watching pass by him as he resides in a state of despair as opposed to looking back at his life with pride and feelings of satisfaction.
This concludes this video on the psychology of No Country for Old Men. Please watch my other videos on other TV and film characters if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.